నా పాటకు నేను అనాథాల బతికేస్తుంటే ఉత్తరాలు రాసి ఇబ్బంది పెట్టిందే కాకుండా దారి ఖర్చులు ఇస్తానంటాం న్యాయమా సీత హలో అండ్ వెల్కమ్ ఎ రొమాంటిక్ ఫిల్మ్ విత్ బ్యూటిఫుల్ లిరికల్ మ్యూజిక్ సెట్ ఇన్ ద బ్యాక్ డ్రాప్ ఆఫ్ టెర్రరిజం ఇన్ కశ్మీర్ ఇఫ్ యూఆర్ థింకింగ్ మనీ రత్నం సరోజా వీ ఆర్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ సీతా రామం అండ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ విత్ మీ దిల్కేర్ సల్మాన్ అండ్ బ్రినాల్ ఠాకూర్ ఫర్ బోత్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఇన్ అన్స్ ఎ డెబ్యూ ఫర్ యూ ఫస్ట్ టైమ్ ఇన్ తెలుగు అండ్ యూ డిడ్ మహానటి ఇన్ టూ థౌజండ్ ఎయిటీన్ అండ్ వెరీ బ్రేవ్లీ ప్లేడ్ character who in fact had certain negative roles as well yeah. and yet you became so popular heart throb absolutely <laughs> i must say Thank you. so uh, you have shot in multiple locations uh, kashmir must have been very 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 challenging and russia too i am told yeah russia the girls went i <laughs> i was denied the opportunity uh, <laughs> girls that they tempted me many times saying we'll shoot in russia but but we we began in kashmir in in march of last year uh, we shot we had to get the snow so before the snow melted we all fit had to finish all our other commitments and get there so we began in sonmarg in srinagar and that kind of set the the pace of the film that's where we first met monalami mm-hmm. uh but we we first thought kashmir was challenging but then we shot in spiti valley in uh, november that was wow. tough that was uh, i mean the first time i'm seeing like pipes frozen over no running water things like that people we were we had crew members dropping like every day somebody has you know altitude issues or breathing trouble and there's an ambulance on set so that was yeah that was challenge you get to wear warm clothes and you didn't uh, i had some warm clothes but she <laughs> the song yeah she was she you know more. as long as i wear warm clothes in um, spiti kaza it's okay but when you have to wear the same clothes in hyderabad <laughs> and shoot in 39 degrees 40 degrees pretending that it's cold and one droplet of sweat just drops it was interesting it was different it's a different experience but i must say that whatever we've shot uh when you watch it on screen you just feel like it's absolutely worth it uh i remember minus 10 it was in sonmarg when we were shooting yeah. the the dance uh the song and uh, my hands were literally frozen but today when i watch it i feel like ah oh, this is you know for uh, being an actor you just have to train your mind you just have to say oh it's so hot you know <laughs> like sweating you know <laughs> so but it was fun i got to explore like i've never been to sonmarg before i've never traveled to russia sidpur and uh, i think that's the best that's the beauty about being an actor you get to travel and explore so many places uh you get to know about the culture and i think these are the things that we pick up and add that into the character so you will see little bit bits and pieces that in sita it's totally different you know as far as mrunal is concerned so i i am really happy that i've like discovered myself uh, as a human and as an actor through this journey sita ne ela padkovali maa kinka 10 days the time undi ram gurinchi tells this sita ne padkodam easy lieutenant ram madras regiment service year 1965 they were in uh, mahanati as well you had a retro look now you go back again to the 65 that's something that seems to go very well with you yeah i i don't know i think i was born in the wrong era <laughs> <laughs> something but it's something i i genuinely enjoy um, i think when when i was young um, i felt like you know budgeting of films and inflation and everything you were seeing less and less uh, period films because uh, what they could make in the 70s and 80s i feel like in the 90s it was not really easy to attempt because the numbers are so big mm-hmm. uh so i never thought even if i were to become an actor that i would have the luxury to do this um so i think now that it is possible and you know and the, and the business has changed uh i relish every opportunity uh with every frame i feel like i'm stepping back in time being the son of mamuti i mean the living legend we call him yeah. and uh, from that time onwards you now don't no longer need that uh, introduction at all i mean you are a superstar by yourself in malayalam cinema you've done hindi films as well you've done tamil as well what is the need that you feel now to venture into new languages um i it's not something i've seeked um actively or consciously like it's i get these offers um i get inquiries and uh, and then if if i if i like the script if i identify with the character and if i can manage the language i i don't think beyond that and i really cherish these opportunities i really cherish uh, 
I guess like Munal said, how much you know, we find ourselves in, in traveling. Um, imagine being able to travel through a different industry and a different language and experience those cultures and those people and that literature and all of this. So I think that's all I'm seeking. I, people are, people think I have some big plan uh, to do despite this. Despite being your father's son, the pressure was not there right from childhood saying, I also want to be there. You I started late. You actually I started did business. Yeah, yeah, I started very late. Um, compared to some of my contemporaries. But um, I think I, f I felt like I'd, uh, the boots I had to fill were too large. And uh, I think I've grown up with a, with a consciousness that I don't want to ever tarnish my father's name in any which way, whether it's uh, my conduct or how I behave. It's been something I've always been very aware of. So <laughs> if I became an actor and, I'm, and I failed spectacularly, I thought like, you know, it's not like him having a bad movie. Like it's, uh, it's something that I would inflict. So I shied away from it for that. I'm sure that he's long. immensely proud of you now. I think he's quietly proud. <laughs> <laughs> Brunel, you actually came from a very different background. And the transition that you have made, uh, first of all, perhaps not a film background at all, unlike uh, Dilkar, and coming into television and then making that transition into cinema, the big cinema, and doing OTT as well, that must have been a tough journey as well. And for everyone, I mean, you get labeled. Once you are in television, they say... Uh, Familiar face, too familiar a face perhaps. Yes, uh, you know, actually I would really like to thank my audience because I think now they're open to see, you know, they, they're watching us in like, they they prefer watching old content on OTT, be it television, be it big films. And there's no, like in, like when I started my career, I used to watch all these uh, shows, Friends and Big Bang Theory and all of that. They used to yeah. feature in films also. So I don't know why was that stigma or that stereotype uh, I just felt like it's important for me to break those stereotypes and uh, uh, I, I realized this one thing that I need to be proud of where I've started my career from because a lot of actors I met they're like you need to hide that you've done television and I said I do not want to hide that I take immense pride in that in fact I started my career and I owe it to television I think one of the reasons, like today I just discovered that there are a lot of people who used to watch my television show in Hyderabad. So it's not like my, it is my film debut, but people already know me. That's an advantage and I'm very, I'm really grateful. Um, yes, it was difficult because there are a lot of people who would have their uh, judgments and thoughts key, you know, television actors shouldn't feature in a movie or uh, any other things. But I realized that for an actor, what is important is as long as I'm facing the camera, it's okay, you know, I don't care which medium it's going on. That's why I wanted to do films. I wanted to do Hindi films. I want to do Marathi films. I want to do Telugu films. I just want to break that record and let people know that if you're an actor, you're an actor. It doesn't matter which language, what platform, what film or show or series, Hollywood, Bollywood, Tollywood should just not matter. For you, the pressure of actually being in a film family was more which kept you away, you would yeah. say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but that's, I mean, it's, it's also your personal journey and your personal demons and uh, it doesn't mean other, you know, children from film families have had those issues. Maybe they were supremely confident and they felt it's their birthright and I'm, you know, I'm going to do it and show, uh, prove my legacy. Uh, but I, th I think we all have our own, own journeys and I think I had to find the right time, want to take that plunge, want to face my fears. Sita. But also it's an interesting time, isn't it? Like you mentioned, films from here are no longer just Telugu films because they get seen everywhere. Yeah. And OTT has kind of universalized this. Kerala is like Finally. ruling the roost. Everyone's oh watching God, uh, yeah. Malayalam films. Yeah. Uh, but there have been certain things. I mean, there's a caste system almost like that. I mean, it's as though the North Indian films are very different from the South Indian films. And uh, uh, the acceptance from the audience is there. Is the North a uh, little insecure about the South? <laughs> <laughs> I should answer that question. <laughs> you should tell me that. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I like there's this competition. Why? But uh, not insecure. Uh, the best thing is that 
See, I have been a part of jo- uh, Jersey remake, and I fell in love with the 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 story and the content, the way it was shot, and the actors. Nani, I'm sh- they've done like incredible job. Um, in the north right now, what is happening is like, what is the next uh, Telugu film or Malayalam film <laughs> that we must watch? So I'm uh, I'm really happy that we all are like accepting. It's no more like a Telugu film. It's it's like an Indian film. Like Dhanush also when his film released, he said it's really beautiful that no longer we. are representing a particular state or you know it's 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 an indian film. like today we were discussing that tulkar speaks malayalam i speak marathi rashmika speaks different language we have um, brinda masuji speaking tamil on set hanu sir speaks telugu so it's like an indian crew yeah. how wonderful is that isn't so it so many actors we have like uh, you know bengali actors we have uh, Marathi actors. We have, we've covered the whole of India. Whole of India, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you watch the film, you'll see. There's Gautam Sir from Chennai. I mean, he's also part Malu. Like, uh, <laughs> it's it's. We've covered the whole country yeah. in the film. But I don't, I don't, I don't know if uh, you know. I feel like insecurity is a strong word. Mm. But uh, every time one industry does well, historically, I feel like all the other industries kind of sit up and take notice. You know, what are they doing right? Uh, how do we um, um, change our attitude or like our uh, choices? and generally i think the past two years is something none of us predicted uh, mm-hmm. what happened and uh, everyone across across the spectrum including malayalam we're all sitting and reflecting and trying to figure what next you know it's not it's not like uh, any of our i think every industry is facing trouble bringing audiences back to the yeah. cinemas so everybody is reflecting right now trying to figure what kind of cinema what uh, how do we bring them back how do we draw them how do we attract them to give them that experience that that they have to watch in cinemas i can't wait a month for this to come out on ott uh, so i i think that's happening across i don't think it's i love that that you know the films are traveling i love that everybody's watching everything um historically we've always watched hindi films now i love that you know the north markets are watching our films and they're not finding language a barrier uh, i don't know how much people are reading subtitles but but uh, you don't always need a language to tell a story i think people are just identifying with the story and, and the actor so I, i think it's a, it's a wonderful time it's a lovely transition and for an actor is it uh, is there something like that like uh, you know you were mentioning that moving from television to that was natural for you that you got a bit of bigger platform or you rather targeted a bigger platform you wanted to be there and doing that but now ott and big films is that something that uh, big stars are willing to straddle both these worlds i think we've both done cinema and ott uh, i finished something with rajan dk for netflix mm. uh, you've done tufan just came on ott directly but that's a film but you've also done an anthology yeah, i'm and sure you're open yeah, to yeah, series yeah yeah so, yeah so see that's what uh, my uh, the only aim i have is to reach to as many audience as i can and if that is happening through ott then why not like 190 countries and its territories it's incredible yeah. uh, and i'm really happy that through you social media population you'll have them all over the world yeah so, even other way, like if other you do an indian, an indian show well. like a netflix will dub it uh, and subtitle it into 190 or 200 uh, languages So it's a, it's a strange reach that we never dreamt possible. Possible, yeah. 20 years back, I know that I was just a little bit of a drama. But who? Who was that? 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 This letter is the same. It's the same name. I'm going to see you in the same way. I'm going to see you in the same way. I'm going to see you in the same way. go to Uh, thing right. that i do hmm. but uh, vishal has done an amazing amazing album and an amazing background score and my day starts only with uh, not because i'm i'm saying it because i'm a part of no i heard people say even just today this morning my colleague was telling me that his wife actually listens to your music <laughs> song so, every day so now so much soul and it just takes us back to that era and there's so much love do you have the list on your phone yes but i oh, wait i found it found yeah. it Uh, but yeah, so I mean, 
Munal and a whole bunch of uh, the team haven't heard the background score in the film. No, so because I've been dubbing in so many languages, I keep getting one reel which has a background score and it's amazing, like uh, not just the songs. Just like this, so yeah. that you have it later. Mm. Okay, you want to join in? Oh. In tandam darimalinda bhoomi pai ke cheru kunnada Le kunte chekki umtara achu nila shilpa sampada Jagattu churani mahattu nidile Ninavuta ki tarin chenta pasila Nishedu lanni talonche tushara niva Wow! Yay! I'm, I, I very smartly not picked the... The songs which have <laughs> Tamil would have been beautiful higher, higher pitches. Yes, Tamil is a language of comfort. Tamil I would have been yeah, comfortable with. But uh, I think because I've uh, we've all heard the, the album in Telugu originally. Mm. That's how we shot. Yeah, so we like that the most. I think it just sounds correct. Uh, everything else seems to be a variation. Another movie of yours that we loved, of course, was OK Kanmani right. with Mani Ratnam. How was that experience like that? I, it's amazing. It's like uh, it's like I got into an Ivy League school or IIT or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us actors and you get... Uh, that crucial call from Madras Talkies and, and that meeting with Mani Sir and you get a film. I feel like it feels like this giant accomplishment. Irrespective of what the film is and what it does, like just to be noticed by him or, or even uh, you know considered by Mani Sir, I feel like it's a big big prize for, for almost all of us actors. Uh, so I, I genuinely enjoyed just being there like a student. I was observing everything like his... Uh, the way he, he, he stages a scene, the way he blocks a scene, uh, he, and how sharp he is, his eye for detail is incredible. Uh, he, can, he can look into, walk into the room and be like, oh, that bed sheet is off, uh, that continuity is wrong. Wow. And it'll be like light blue and sea blue <laughs> or something, like the rest of us can't tell it apart. Wow. So he's that uh, uh, on to everything. And, and he, he, films on Mahanati, how did you agree to play Jamni Ganesan? I mean, in a biopic, which is obviously not centered on your character, yeah. but on Savitri. And yet, uh, you made Jamni Ganesan very lovable. He was, of course, called Kadal Mandan, I think. He was, boy, he was lovable, right? Uh, but <laughs> so, how I, did that come about? I think, I mean, I, I met I met Nagi and uh, Swapna and Priyanka and all of them. And uh, so they said they're making this biopic on, on, on Savitri Garu and... Uh, I was like, that's interesting because they, they're all young, like they're all, you know, 20, uh, 30 somethings and I was like, it's interesting that you guys are exploring something like that and then they said they want me to play uh, Jamni sir and I was like, I don't look anything like him, you know, uh, that was my first concern. Second, I, I was like, Telugu is so alien to me because I've never had that exposure, never had any time here, uh, some, a few friends. So I kept saying no, but they were, they were very insistent that, but I got the film, I understood the film, I understood the role. And I kept insisting that you find somebody from Telugu to play this because, you know, to do justice to the role. And I, I, I don't want to be the only weak link in an otherwise amazing sort of classic film. But yeah, I think they had conviction that I could pull it off. And, but I kind of got to explore uh, the character through his family. And, and inevitably, if he's someone who's, uh, uh, you know, had so, so many wives or affairs and all this stuff, he's bound to be charming and likable uh, and what I realized was everybody loves him like none of his kids uh, nobody seems to have anything negative to say about him so he he uh, I found that interesting that, that to play somebody like that I genuinely enjoyed the conflicts and the gray areas that was as an actor for me that was not something I get to do all the time yeah, yeah. yeah. quite a tough balancing act keeping yourself very lovable and yet you have this point as, as an actor I feel like that's what we enjoy doing you know it's, it's more interesting to play gray uh, and, and sort of dark stuff, you know, because it's more intense. So Sita Ramam sounds like a very traditional title. I mean, Sita, by one interpretation, at least should be a very conservative uh, uh, woman who perhaps got, her life got controlled in many ways by Rama. This is nothing to do with the mythology, is it? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Uh, see, that's the beauty, you know. The beauty about Sita Ramam is the bond that Sita and Ram share. It's the it's their journey about how they fall in love and what happens next. Uh, that's what Sita Ramam all about. It's not about <laughs> how her life has been controlled. <laughs> no, in fact, what I love about Sita is the fact that in spite of being in that era, 
she is way ahead of her time she decides she so decisive she takes decisions for in, you know for herself she she's that kind of person who's like if i will not decide what i want someone else will decide for me which i'll not be happy with so i really want to be happy and i want to be make sure that i take charge of my life and my you know control over that so i think we need uh, more women like sita mahalakshmi forget that era right in this era as well so yeah that's what sita and her love for ram that's what the film is all about apni gram aur hotel sa Thank you so much, both of you, for uh, joining me on this chat, Thank and best so wishes for uh, Sita Rama as well. Do Thank watch it you. and let us know what you think. Yes, most certainly. So that's a trilingual that's going to release on the fifth of August, and I'm sure uh, audiences across are going to enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching.